And welcome to Don's TV on this Monday evening and the second round of the FA Cup against Ramsgate. Ramsgate, the lowest placed team left in the competition. This is officially the last fixture of the weekend. Obviously, had a few games um, cancelled due to the bad weather. Good news is this game is on tonight and we have a full, full, away, full away fans with Ramsgate. 1,520 coaches have no idea where they're going to park them. We have over 100 people from ITV. The cameras are here and we are live on ITV4 and ITVX tonight. Give you a bit of an idea. ITV have been here most of the evening. Let me just show you around and um, yeah, just see how Plough Lane looks this evening. So we've got cameras everywhere today. So we've got the cameras are in the uh, in the corner there, the southwest. Um, that's where we believe Laura Woods will be presenting tonight. Um, a bit of a different behind the well, the fan zone. We've got the camera. We've got the camera crews in there today. So be aware that the MyPi and all the other um, outlets will be around at the corner on the east stand. Here we are. So they're a bit different tonight. They are here. You're just going to have to find them as you go through. Cables everywhere. So they are they are sort of and taped in. But behind the goal, bit of a change. We've got the. The microphones, we've got another camera, loads and loads of cameras here tonight. Of course, behind the goal, we um, a few seats are not available tonight. Um, and then we have on the east end, so we have in each gangway, we have a camera. We have a TV gantry um, in the bang center of the east end. So that's where I believe a commentator is going to be. Terry Gibson is a co-commentator tonight. Camera on the halfway line. Again, uh, no expense no expense saved on this. Um, so, yeah. Um, there we go. That is all tonight. So, let's come back to me. So, yeah. Let's go straight in now. So, we have Notts County highlights, extended highlights and reaction for you now. After that, we'll be going into the Adabao, Adabao Akinfema official podcast released this afternoon. So, we've got about 10 minutes of that. And then, when you come back to us, around about sort of 10 to seven uh, the rest of the team will be here we'll go through live team news so um yes enjoy this is the Notts county highlights by curry curry with alhamidi bursting through on goal not for the first time in this game the Notts county defense is beaten and what a chance well they've had so many opportunities in this game and you got it's asc wimbledon on the attack again and it's little who sends it to davison of the arm says the referee it will be a corner which has been taken quickly here by Notts County who are pushing for this equalizing goal good ball smart finish 2-2 Notts County back in the game and all of a sudden they're pushing for a winner twisting is Austin he delivers how about that for a stop Alex Corner delivered to the back of the area. Slow can punches. And there was some holding. And there will be another penalty. For the second time in the game, Notts County concede a penalty kick. And it's Curry who wasn't given the chance to move. And it will be Reeves who will step up for the second time in this game. Reeves. Penalty number two. As fierce as the first, and with four minutes to go, AFC Wimbledon are back ahead. Let's count to finding space here for Kyle Cameron. Here comes the delivery, it has been turned away. And Al Hamidi has managed to steal the ball and he bursts free. Looking to finish up the game here. He's done exactly that in injury time. A second of the game for Al Hamidi. Persistence in his determination to pick up the ball. And then he had the speed to burst away and the composure to finish things off here goal number four and it could be the important one here for Wimbledon what a game what a brilliant game here in League 2 
Notts County struggles away from home continue. They were far too open at the back here. So many chances for AFC Wimbledon to score. And they took advantage. A fabulous performance here. Quite outstanding in front of goal. They close the gap. What a game, Johnny. Uh, an unbelievable ending to it. What's your initial feelings after that? Just absolutely uh, exhausted, I think. It was a brilliant game of football. I think great advert for the league. Great advert for us as a, as a club, and as a team. I think my boys are magnificent. Can't can't give them enough credit. But um, you've yeah, done it the hard way as well. So a few heart and mouth moments. A little tension there with the penalty kicks and stuff like that. But wouldn't have it any other way when you get the outcome like that. Yeah, as you say, um, let's just say penalties have been a little bit of a lottery for us this season, as they always are. But Jake Reeves steps off as the captain, puts two away. Yeah, and you know Reeves, he can't speak highly enough of him. I had a good chat with him yesterday. I knew that we'd get opportunities, maybe, that that, that would happen today with the way that we was going to go about attacking them. Um, I knew it was a high-pressure game, full house, and against really top opposition. And in that moment, you're probably going to need your call his head. And uh, certainly what what the skipper was in, in that moment, so he was more than happy to take on that responsibility. That's the type of player and the type of man that he is, and uh, he stepped up today. Yeah, it's a huge week. Uh, when you play a team like Notts, you, I just said to their assistants, sometimes for them it's probably hard to watch previous games of other teams because everyone who plays against them will probably change the way that they play. Maybe change the shape or change something to try and nullify their threats and what they're good at. You have to give them respect, um, which we did today, but not too much respect. So obviously you have to try and implement your own game plan. Would you say everyone to a man out there this afternoon for a Wimbledon shirt has, has done their job this afternoon? Yeah, I thought everyone was brilliant. Staff, players, players that come on, everyone stuck to the game plan, like I said, really, really well. We've got to talk about yourself here. Against your old side, Notts County, two penalties at either end as well. Tell us about it, the <coughs> technique, and about going about that. Yeah, yeah, I've had a few penalties um, over the years. Changed techniques, changed styles, uh, found a good rhythm um, at Stevenage particularly with uh, two pens and uh, stuck to that, so that was my first one. Uh, second one, obviously I, I played with uh, the goalkeeper Sam Slocum. Um, I, I thought he would think that I was going to be maybe very, very confident in myself to put it in the same area, so I kind of guessed that he was going to dive. It's always a guess, it's a gamble. Um, so I thought, do the same routine, do the same technique, but I know where I'm going and I think he'll dive. And luckily And there we go, 4-2 win against Notts County on Saturday, previous here at Plough Lane. A few home wins now, what we do for another home win tonight in front of the cameras. So as I said, Adebayo Confema joined us here on Tuesday, Aaron Paul interviewed him. And um, it was a really, really, as Adebayo Confema is a unique character, bubbly, full of beans, and um, really enjoyed talking about the past. So here's a 10 minute preview. Uh, a video preview. The podcast is now available on all the popular, or your popular or your normal podcast providers. So go to there and um, yeah, about ten minutes, and we'll be back live from Plough Lane. Side of things because we have got so many fan questions, and I want to cram in yeah. as many of them as, as possible. When you arrived at King's Meadow, tell me about the dressing room you found because there were some big characters in there. Barry Fuller, Danny Bullman, who, who's been on this podcast, George Franken was there, Sean Rigg, young Adi Aziz knocking around, some players who go on to do some really good things at yeah, this yeah. football club. But what was the dynamic like in the dressing room? Um, listen, it was cool from the get-go. Like, I, I, listen, I'd known Baz. So I'd known Baz from Gillingham. So, and me and Baz connected. So we're very strong personality strong characters and we we already connected from jills so and I, I think at that point listen i'm a product of the efl so i'd come across these players throughout my career and and, I, and one thing i i've known about myself i'm a big personality you know i have a big presence <clears throat> but then also what i do know is 
but I love a team dynamic. I, I don't care how big you are, I don't care how strong or fast, <clears throat> excuse me, you can't do anything by yourself. And I'd known that like from back in the day. So going in there, even though I knew I was a big presence, it was a big presence to be able to say, we're all gonna have to work and come together. So the changing room was cool. I, listen, for, I can only take from my point of view, like I remember um, we had Callum Kennedy. When I'm talking about when everything just fit, I mean, I, it started even like, I, me, I was a gym goer. So for people that <coughs> may not believe it, I used to actually get in early, like that changed as I got like later on in my career. But <laughs> I used to get in early to training and you, you'd see there'd be three or four in the gym before training. Then all of a sudden it was six or seven in the gym, then eight or nine. And then all of a sudden you'll have like 18 men in the gym working out before, playing tunes, stretching, doing weights. And it was that was just the changing room. The changing room was just, it was solid from the get go. And then listen, it, it only got, it only got stronger. Did you feel that with your personality, you could add influence? And I'm gonna come onto this in a bit, a bit more deeper. Um, when I mention one word, I'm expecting you to go mad, but did you feel you could add influence? You could have that positive effect. You could say, right, boys, I'm going to the gym. Whoever's following me, follow me, let's roll. Yeah, I, listen, I, again, I'll always say, I was very much aware of my presence and my influence. I was very much aware of that. What I would say was, it was never a fact where it was, come and do this. It, 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 it wasn't that, it was, what, and this is why I say about things mirroring up and just clicking. It was, you didn't want to get left behind and that was the characters we had. So when three or four went in there, it wasn't even like, oh, I'm going in the gym, follow me. It was literally like, oh, okay, these individuals are going into the gym. So why am I then sitting in the changing room? And then that's what it was. So, but for myself, I was very aware of it, but I didn't have to. I didn't have to tell, listen, come, come follow me to the gym. It was the fact where it was, oh, these people are trying to do things right. And then all of a sudden it just became, like I say, footballs where creatures of habit. And then it just be it comes like, ah, oh, nah, man, this is what we're gonna do before training and then after training. And then, listen, it can only build. If you do that, it can only, in my opinion, only go one way. The league campaign that year was unspectacular. We finished 15th and I'll go on and ask you a question about that in a moment. But tell me about walking out of Kings Meadow and scoring against your beloved Liverpool. Yeah, you know what, I still, <coughs> when I say, I say there's defining moments in careers or like in mine, I remember the lead up, yeah, it was, I remember just getting interviews, 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 and it just, oh, you're a Liverpool supporter. And of course, I was a big character at the time as well, but it was just interviews, interviews, interviews. And I remember just thinking, bro, man, like, well, we're playing against Liverpool. And I remember, I think I got injured prior to the lead up and I was like I really don't care like and, and I'll say this and I hope people can understand it um, at least I'm old enough now <coughs> that there's selfish moments that I think players have to kind of take not have but will I was going to limp out to play against Liverpool you know and I think that was a fix that was a moment where and I remember Ards was saying it he was like look you know you're going to have to try and control the expectations because we still had a league campaign that we had to focus on. Mm. But listen, I, 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 I would like people to understand that, but it's a premiership team. It was my team. So I remember thinking, it doesn't matter what, I'm going to be out there playing. Um, but listen, luckily I, I, I did get back fit. Um, and I, I do remember we lined up at Kings Meadow and was about to walk out. And I remember looking at all the Liverpool players, I mean, it was Skirt, Skirt, all Henderson, Saka, Saka, and I was like, bro, oh, these boys are some big boys. Like, there was the first thing I was thinking, bro, oh, these men are some athletes. I kid you not, the first thing I'm doing, I'm running straight for Skirtle's chest. I don't care if I'm winning the ball or not. I'm, and that was the first thing. Let I him know thought. you're there. I, dude, it was the first thing. I, I must have got <coughs> 17 fouls in the first 15 minutes. Because in my mind, I'm like, yo, <laughs> I'm, he go know I'm about. Um, and then I remember, I'd, listen, I, I can remember this like it was yesterday. I remember for 20 minutes, we gave them so much respect. We tried to play them like we was in the same league as them. And it's like, it was like, we wasn't trying to rough them up. We wasn't like, and it was like, so I remember then after Gerard just, I, in my mind, I just feel like he got bored and said, I'm gonna go score. So he made it one nil. And then after 20 minutes into the game, we all of a sudden, we started to be like, nah, man, like, 
of like, if this is going to be our only chance, let's take it to them. And I remember, yeah, I remember scoring the goal. And I remember it's the only time in my career for the first three seconds, I just didn't know what to do. I was thinking, oh shit, like oh sorry. I remember, um, <laughs> I remember, uh, what do I do? And then I remember running off to the corner. And then I remember me and Cal did this little dance that we done. But it was amazing. And I remember after that, it kind of took me to another level in the sense of people knowing my name. Because I think it was the first time the FA Cup was on TV. And I remember it took over EastEnders. So a lot of people that were planning to watch EastEnders ended up watching the game. And I remember they switched on the TV and I was like, but who's this 17 stone player running around and just knocking over players? And I remember just getting viral on tweets. And I remember we lost the game and I remember doing ITV News. And anybody from London, when you do ITV News, you're like, oh, everybody watches the news. And I, was, I think to myself, what do they want me to come on TV for? Like, we lost, what am I gonna? But that was the, the moment when I was like, oh, like people outside the EFL kind of knew who I was. So, no, I mean, it was a good moment for myself. Nerds like me obviously knew all about you and, yeah. and you know, enjoyed watching you play. <coughs> My question to you is, is that did you thrive upon that added, I want to call it fame because it is fame. Did you thrive on the fame? Did you, was it pressure? Was the you... Uh, no, man. I, listen, I thrived on the fact of, I remember people always saying, ah, uh, this guy can't play ball. I, I thrived on that. I thrived on the fact where I was like, I don't care how I'm built, I can play this game of football. So that's what it was. I'd go, on this, I'd go out and listen, I know I'm not built like a footballer. This is not me thinking in my head, oh, I'm built like this, like I'm running out. Like no, I know I'm not built like football. I, I, I see people in the change room. But what I also knew was I knew I could play this game. So I thrived on the fact of going out and doing something that from a five-year-old I loved to do and was good at it. So listen, the fame bit of it, I started to navigate it better. So all of a sudden, it was a lot more people who wasn't into, into football knew about me. And that was the bit that I then was like, oh, right, you know what? A lot more people, I'm walking down the street and people who are not in League Two know about <coughs> me. And then all of a sudden, Sky started to take more notice on me. And then, of course, you re realise how big the platform Sky is. So I started to realise, oh, I'm reaching pl places that I've never reached before. And people started to know me. So I was navigating that. But on the football pitch, and I'll always say this to individuals, it didn't matter what I was doing outside. It didn't matter how much people knew about me. Whenever it came to game day, I was a footballer. I wanted to win. I was a competitor. So, and that's where it always came back to. I thrived on listen, trying to be the best version of myself. It never always happened that way, but that was my thrive, going out there constantly and continue to say, B, you can play this game. So go and show you can play this game. And that's what I enjoyed. Hello everyone and welcome. FA Cup night, I'm joined by Reese as we take on Ramsgate. Um, and yeah, the atmosphere is, is really building up already. Um, <laughs> I think there's four or five Vuvuzela type items if you remember back to the 2010 World Cup. Yeah. Uh, so if you hear any noises like that, we do apologise. They're out of our control. Um, ITV are in the house and you'll probably see in the distance there, they've got loads of um, gantries for their 16 camera angles. Um, but yeah, I think if we're going to test Spike behind the camera here under some pressure, for some team news um, ahead of our tie today. There, there we, we go. go. Um, relatively unchanged from Tuesday. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, Josh Nerfell in uh, for James <laughs> Tilly, but... You know, what do you make of that, Reese? Sort of that team. It's a very, very strong lineup. I think it's good to go strong, but I feel like maybe we should have gave some of the players a little bit of a rest as we were talking off camera. Maybe Little Reeves. I think James Ball definitely deserves a start. Um, even Zanev. I know Bass has been brilliant, but I think Zanev has been brilliant when he started against Coventry in our two-one win earlier on in the season. So yeah, but the bench is really strong, and if we need to use them, then it's perfect, really. Absolutely, yeah, I have to agree. There you go. Spikes put it up for us in a formation graphic. Reeves and Little must have clocked up so many minutes this season. But 100%. I feel like with the yeah, yeah, the, the the people we've got in behind the scenes now, I feel like that injury seemed to be touch wood on the sort of better than they were last year anyway. Yeah. So I feel like they'd, they'd know sort of how many minutes they've had. But yeah, James Ball, what's the man got to do to get a start? I, um, I, I think he's fantastic and, and he's been great. Um, good to see Husbyler back. Obviously, yeah, uh, and Alex Bass in goal. I agree. Nick Zanev, I think, will be looking at today maybe for a start as he did so well earlier in the season against Coventry um, but yeah can't be upset 
FA no. Cup taking it seriously. That's all we ask for as fans. Um, we're now uh, joined by Stu Deacons. Hello, Stu. <coughs> Those of you who've been watching the show have already seen Stu uh, as he spoke to Terry Gibson early on. Uh, yeah. How is that? All good? Good, yeah. We, um, we interviewed Terry Gibson years ago uh, during COVID, during lockdown. God, that is years ago now, yeah, isn't it? It feels like it. <laughs> um, I, had, I felt a bit uneasy. Got, sorry to... Oh. Here we go, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, Terry Gibson, good lad. Um, I felt a bit um, guilty because he obviously was standing next to me and I was quite tall. I, I should have probably thought about maybe a sort of a, a stool or something. <laughs> 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 felt a bit guilty, but he's, yeah. It's, it's great, to be fair, to come down. Um, and we're going to show the interview in a little while. I've just been down... Watching the live TV coverage start. Very exciting. Laura Woods, looking good. Yeah, yeah. Laura Woods walking with um, Hayden with the FA Cup. There we go. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to walk with that person <laughs> too much. Love to see it. Hayden. Hayden, yeah. <laughs> Don't get too close. Um, we had the team news up just now. Yes. Um, what do you make of it? Obviously, unchanged apart from Nerf Hill and Fatilli. Yeah, uh, I think the FA Cup we take seriously. Um, it's one of those weird ones, isn't it? We sort of now know we face um championship were they leaders or second, second um, place, late, yeah. um it's switch in the next round whether that's that's a good home draw look i know for some people want a away game i this competition we budget to make no money out of it yeah. so it's just revenue for january window i feel yeah. like a home draw is definitely better than away in my opinion in this case yeah this i case would have not, loved yeah. a like a, a united away a live oh, away no, a big one get up get yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I love I, that magic of the cup but i get that i get that Ipswich plays some sensational football and um you probably saw um, than play last week, uh, last, last weekend. Well, yeah, I say last weekend. It was literally two days ago. Um, and they, yeah, <laughs> they played, night, yeah, yeah. It was so weird. I know. Well, football I know. Night was very strange. Um, but yeah, they play some incredible football. Get them down Plough Lane, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah. the first task is get past Ramsgate. And as we know, cup ups, the FA Cup is where the magic happens. And there's always an upset here and here and there. Um, hopefully not today. But uh, I don't think we should look past Ramsgate just yet. Um, Good question by Ella Pierce. Um, it's not an I follow because ITV have got yeah, it live. ITV, so ITV4, to be precise. And there ITVX. Go. ITVX, as, there we go. So you can get it on any slight, Spike's doing device. something weird. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm thinking if you're in the UK, you can probably watch it on ITV. If you're abroad, I'm not too sure. ITVX, I think, works abroad. Does it? I want to say. Look at us if we know yeah, what yeah. we're talking about. Have, have a Google. What I was going to say very, very quickly, um, I was actually looking at prize money. Um, yes. And it's 67 grand for the winner wow. in this round. I feel like it's so. over 100 grand because of TV as well. Yeah, sorry, just prize money is, yeah, is that alone. Money, TV yeah. money, I think, yes, yeah, close to 60, 70 grand. Wow. Um, so that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, yeah. And you know, we're guaranteed a TV money, of course. Yeah. But, you know, 67 grand is not... And if we can spend that in a January window, everyone's a winner. Yeah, exactly. exactly, and I think sort of January window is obviously a hot, tra a hot topic every time, isn't it? Every season, obviously, after last year. Yeah. Look, I think with Craig Cope in charge, I think one of the only one, one or two signings he had the say in in, in January was... Was Ali uh, and Casey McAteer, I think. Yes. Was one of them that was the and loan. They were, and there were two I mean, quality signings. Ali's Ali scoring silly goals this season and yeah. Casey McAteer scoring in the champ. So they were two very good pickups. Okay. And look with him up there and, and him and Johnny Jackson working well together. I'd have a lot of confidence in them to sort of keep and hold of players. Look, the feel around the squad is fantastic. The players are coming off the, off the game most of the time with a smile. And, you know, yeah. that's what you ask for. The players seem to have bought into. Bought into Hate using the phrase, but bought into the project really, really well. The process. Um, the process, the yeah. Process. Bought, into the, bought into the process. <laughs> the at all. Buzzwords, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> really, no, really well. It's really good to see. Like, I think this time last season, there were so many injuries and everything. Um, we had pretty much, we didn't really have a lot of squad depth. And this year, it seems like a lot of things have changed at the club. And it's, it's all positive in my eyes. Absolutely. I was just going to say, despite very quickly, this is a busy month as well, isn't it? We've got the graphics. Yes. We've got the uh, next lot of fixtures. This is a... I'll get, I'll get them right this time, don't worry, I won't get myself in there. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I know, I, I feel on the spot last time, yeah, didn't I? Yeah, I know, there we go, um. on screen. <laughs> Obviously, we've got Ramsgate today, and then on Saturday, uh, another home game as we welcome Swindon. Then we travel to Salford, yep. and then we've got the Bristol Street Motors, uh, formerly known as the Papa John's Trophy, uh, Pompey away as we visit Fratton, and then Crawley away, and then we see Christmas with Boxing Day away at Sutton. Home to Home Sutton. To Sutton. We've already been away we've being 3-0. We've been 3-0, aren't we? There we go. Good we, day, that I knew, was. wouldn't get through the fixtures without messing up once. Um, <laughs> and I suppose it's worth just saying, don't forget that the Crawley game has now been moved to the Friday night. Of course, yes. Just in case they yes. haven't. Um, the Crawley a game Friday night in Crawley, what more can you want in life? I'd argue that is probably up there one of the greatest things to live. So, there we go. You get... <laughs> two things for the price of one that game Wombles and a night on Crawley um, but yeah no obviously a very very busy month um, and look full strength tonight then we go into Swindon who Swindon are a good side um, scoring goals How, we, we can touch on that in the post match I'm sure um, as we look to Ramsgate today 
Um, I don't know. This is testing Spike. Do we have their team by any chance? No. We don't. Um, um, because I, ITV will have that. Of and course. And we're doing yes. a live coverage. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, I think one of their a, players has got seven goals in the FA yeah, Cup I mean, so far. I think I saw some tweet today. They're doing really well in the, in the league, definitely. Um, yeah. They've got Jordan Green as well. He played 20-odd 20, 20 games in, in League 2 last year oh, right. um, for Gillingham. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Here so, comes their players. Uh, and you can, hear that, you can hear that noise behind sure us. getting beaten, but their players are out for a warm-up. Um, Do you know what? As we look over our shoulder. I know you obviously you can't see it on screen, so it's really bad TV. <laughs> um, but... It makes the atmosphere here, doesn't it? Because yeah. you can get some second round games that are not the most enjoyable. No, no, exactly. And like, these are. Nice. Seeing, look, they're coming up. I mean, think of how many games we had as as, well, as when we've come through the divisions, you know, big yeah. games like this and what a day out. Like, this exactly. is what we want in the next round. Yeah. So, you know, you can't really. It's like our Chelsea away that we oh. had at the start of the season. What, what a day out that was. Yeah. yeah. That was incredible. And, and, and do you know what? These, these are probably giving them a bit of a lift as well. Yeah. 100%. Um, Interesting thing is, they had, you know, talk about the FA. They started in the, foot, the, the first qualifying round. Yeah, wow. It was their second game of the season in August. Mm. Wow. So wow, just to get amazing. here, yeah. and, you, and obviously put, put it before your time, but we have been played in the first qualifying round, and it's yeah. yeah. So this is a long journey. This is massive, and, and yeah. as it should be, as the FA Cup. You know, what I mean, like it's both teams big day out really you know we want we want to get through into the third round to take on Ipswich uh, and they want to get through and what uh, a story that would look be look at Spike Spike has been very oh, switched on look at look that at we've got really, a split screen now let's give a little shout out to Spike on the camera he doesn't get one often <laughs> well done, talented Spike. man um, I don't know where they all are though they have sold a whole lot yeah yeah I imagine they're on their way probably having, having a, having a to, beer outside 1,500 <laughs> of them tonight so they're going to be over to the yeah wow fair play to them just glad they've not all got one of those Vivu because that would be quite loud. Um, yeah, imagine and, 1, and credit, 500 of them. Yeah. I just say credit to the club for keeping the prices really cheap. 100%. Mm. Really exactly cheap. Exactly, it's what it's about, isn't it? You know, get plough lane, get plough lane packed on a Monday night. Um, people coming from work. I myself came straight from work and <laughs> just got my, my bag and all sorts. So that's uh, a dedication, mate. You know what I mean? I love the Wombles. Um, but yeah, no, here come our boys. There we go. They come. Um, and and yeah, I think it will. Yeah, I'm excited. That's all I can really say. So have a good um, interview. Yeah, so we've got the Gibbo interview to come up, haven't we? Oh, there we go, yeah. So Stu spoke to uh, Terry Gibson earlier, and we'll get that for you on the screen now. And we're joined here by Terry Gibson, who's part of the ITV team here tonight, the co-commentary. Um, welcome to Plough Lane again, Terry. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. It's a place I would like to be here more, but work commitments mean I'm doing other stuff on yep. weekends. So when I was asked by ITV to, to do Barcelona Atletico Madrid last night <laughs> and Wimbledon Ramsgate the following night. Still Spanish been, football? Yeah, so I did a game last night for ITV. So it's, uh, <laughs> I'm, one, I'm looking forward, I'm yeah. really enthusiastic about it. Yeah, yeah, I don't get course. often to do English football matches. Yeah. And certainly it's, it's a privilege to be here to be able to do Wimbledon in the FA Cup. So it's a bit different now with Barcelona, isn't it? Not a new count that's being being done yep. up now, isn't it's it? It's the so Olympic Stadium. Yeah, and yeah, it's a uh, it's a different Barcelona at the different moment. Different on that side of it. So um, tonight, Ramsgate, fifteen hundred fans bringing tonight. Yeah, um, it's it's mad, isn't it? The, the magic of the FA Cup. We don't, obviously, we're talking about you know Spanish football and stuff. We just don't get it in any other league, do you? This FA Cup excitement. No, and it, it's there's there is a, an effort to make sure the FA Cup retains that magic. Because for a few years it, it lost it, if yep. I'm being honest, and that's because of Champions League football and top four qualify, and they, yep. in many, for a lot of years now, clubs have prioritised that over winning the FA Cup. But I think it's slowly but surely changing round again. But these early rounds, this is what it's all about. 1,500 fans from Ramsgate. It's the first time they've ever been to yep. this stage of the competition. They they started back in early August, yeah. and they're still going. They've had a re one replay, but I think this is their eighth match tonight. Yeah, and and it's it's a big night for them, but it's a big night for Wimbledon as well. You Definitely, know, we know the draw now. We know it's at Ipswich at home in the next round, so it's it's worth yeah. pursuing and winning again. As tonight. a player, does that it's the draw being before you played your second round game? Does that give you a bit more of an extra carrot, or do you have to concentrate on the game ahead of you? I concentrate. On the, it would give you an extra, you know, boost if you know who you're playing. Yeah. Personally, I don't think the draw should be made until the games are played anyway. I think it should be keep. Yeah. All those little traditional things we need to stick to, otherwise that's the reason why we lose the magic of the FA yeah, Cup. I, agree. I mean, back in my day, it was on the radio. <laughs> and it was, you know, yeah. it was, it was, that was how the draw was made. Now it's on television and it's in between some of the games being played. That's the way it is. But, yeah. you know, I, I think the, in both sets of players will be hoping for, you know, to still be in the, the round in the hat for the next round. But yeah. playing in switch is... It's a big deal in the moment. It's which look like they're going to be on the verge of the Premier League next season. Yes, so it'd be a tough game for either team. And of course, hopefully, I it's, it's Wimbledon. Definitely. So, um, your second visit to Plough Lane, we were chatting beforehand. 
a bit different from the old hundred dollars down the road, isn't it? From the um... yeah, <laughs> I walk, I got the tube here tonight. It's I, I haven't had pleasant memories of driving from Essex to Wimbledon. It's taken me forever, so I've worked my way across on the tube. So I walked past the old stadium, came off at Wimbledon Park, walked down, yeah. saw Bassett House, Lorry House, I think the flats are called. Yeah, and and it's hard to envisage that's where it was, and the little alleyway down to Nelson's and the the main entrance of the old ground. And it, 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 yeah, it, it's a miracle that we're in, in this stadium now. Yeah. It is, you know, from where the club started, how the club started, to get into the league and now to have a, a, a magnificent stadium. It, it really is. And, and I'm, I'm glad the game is on TV because it, it highlights what yeah. Wimbledon have done in, in the last 20 years yeah. and, and where they've come from. And, and, you know, we shouldn't forget that. And I think there are a lot of people's second favourite club in the country because of how they got here. Yeah, and why they got here, and what they, de- they you know, decided to, to do, and it, it's it's good that people get reminded of what's happened at this football club. So you're here part of the ITV team. Um, we had a walk around earlier, and there's a lot of cameras here tonight. I noticed, <laughs> to be fair, we're just behind us. I noticed, obviously, where you're going to be going up there, a little ladder up there. <laughs> oh, is that, I've got flat shoes, and I've, yeah, I, I, I thought about. It. I've, been, I've been in worse. Trust me, I'm, I've been on the roof of some stadiums before, climbing through a hatch, cl- walking around on top of the roof and stuff like that. So, I, I imagined it wasn't going to be that high. Not too bad, but it's not too bad. So that yeah, and no, I was quite quite pleased with where we are tonight. So we're expecting about about six, seven thousand here tonight. This ground's an idle ground. It holds around about ten thousand, but the atmosphere in here can be really, really good. Yeah. Looking forward to a good atmosphere tonight? I am, as I say, the, the only time I've been here was for the, uh, the game in COVID. First game, yeah. It was the first game against Doncaster. Nobody was in the stadium. We were here as we work, we were working. I was here with John Scales and for the club we, we did a, like a six-hour feed on the web that people yeah. could watch the first ever game. So it was a privilege to be here for that game. And yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to, to. I've been here once or twice for different functions, yep. but this is my first visit with the, the, the fans in. So I can't wait to see what the You see much like. of Wimbledon, I see you've got a, a reasonably young team, Annie Al Hammerdy up front, doing yep. really well. He seems to be the star, the star player and better season than what we had last year. Yep. Um, a lot of new players come into the squad and things are going okay, and the, you, you can dream of the playoffs, why not? Definitely. And can I ask for, obviously I know you're doing ITV, can I ask for a little prediction tonight, what you think is going to happen? <laughs> it, it's a difficult one. I think it, Wimbledon have to avoid complacency. Yeah. There are issues that are big differences between the two teams. Ramsgate have a lot of players that have played at this level before, but fitness should be an issue. I've I noticed I think Ramsgate have only trained twice in the last week okay. because they're all working, they've all got jobs, the manager's got another job. Yeah. So I think fitness, you know, the quality should be a yeah. difference, but also I think it's important that Wimbledon start fast and show that fitness, those strength, fitness levels on and off the ball, and that should be enough to see them win comfortably. But yeah. it, you, you just can't write teams they off. It. Up, you know, it? we know as Wimbledon fans, you don't want to be complacent. No. You don't want to rule out an underdog. Um, but I, I would expect a Wimbledon victory tonight, Brilliant. hopefully. Well, look, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely, um, my pleasure. Great to see you Anytime. again, and um, let's hope we have a good, good game ahead of us tonight. Pleasure, thank you. There we go. Uh, that was Stu's catch up with uh, Terry Gibson uh, before the show went live. It was, was, was about yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great lad. He's a great, I just feel so guilty that he looks so small compared to me. I do. A, <laughs> it's because you are six foot eight, Stu. That's why. <laughs> we, we did a thing with me, didn't we? Jeremy? It was yeah. like Carl Hudlin. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, what we'll do is we'll grab the team news up on screen for you just one last time uh, before we sign off. There we go. Uh, it's Alex Bass in goal. Oh, there you go. So the. the Tannoy's doing it for me. Uh, Husbyler and Jack Curry on the uh, wing back. Joe Lewis, Ryan Johnson in the middle with Reeves and Little, uh, Connor Lemon Evans, and Josh Nerfel out wide uh, with our favoured strike partnership of Omar Bujil and Ali Al Hamadi. Uh, and then obviously nine subs um, without two of our numbers apparently uh, <laughs> with Nick Zanev Lee Brown Isaac Ogandere Alex Pierce, James Ball Harry Pell Aaron Sasu Josh Davison and James Tilly uh, very very strong yeah. and uh, there we go and Johnny Jackson there uh, looking very mean on the left side of, the, of your screens um, but yeah very very excited for this one uh, Stu Reese, let's get a prediction we'll go Stu first I, I, know, I think we win I know yeah. it's a match going to come, but I think we if we score early, I think you could probably run out and come to winners. Um, you don't want to say too big a score, yeah, do no, you? Same. Because you've been there. I don't really want just, to jinx anything. Let's either. just go for a 5-0. <laughs> <laughs> Ali or 5? <laughs> Ali or 5? No, Ali because, five. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, no, in all seriousness, if we get an early goal, I think we could run out 4 or 5. In all seriousness, but I hope Rams can give a good go, but not too much. There you go, Rhys. I'm going to say 3 or 4-0. Just 
just get a couple goals in, boost the confidence of some of the lads. We obviously lost to Gillingham on Tuesday night. Um, yeah, three or four nil in my eyes. Lovely stuff. What about well, you? I'm going to sound pessimistic here, but I'm still going for a win. I think Rams get there. They're in good form in the league, and obviously yeah. they've come through a lot of rounds in the cup. And this, they're, they're crowded. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of crowd, a lot of Vuvuzela noise. Um, yeah, I, I think. It, I mean, I think it'll be two 0 uh, I think it'll be an assured performance. But I think they're going to challenge us today. I think they're going to show show some strength. But yeah, as they should, as they should, absolutely. Um, we will be back uh, after the game. Uh, at yeah. about we're half gonna, nine. We're going to try and not clash with the ITV. Obviously, so yes. do a post match. And, um, and we should have a player joining us as well. Beautiful stuff. We have a player. Hopefully, uh, hopefully. A player from the winning side will be the. Uh, <laughs> Let's hope point. so. Uh, uh, one side we get a player. From. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Past the Rams get media team. Uh, all jokes aside, we'll have a player with us, uh, and that'll be yeah after full time. See you then.